the rest of the peri remaining period of this year, what you should do is do the, the right thing and you do what is good. When you do that, you never go wrong. The problem is we do things which again is the law and which is not the right thing to do. So I wish to take this opportunity on behalf of the National Police Service to wish all the services Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year because we are not going to meet again. This is my opportunity to do that. For, to our families, I wish to thank you most sincerely for the support you have given us. You are aware our work is day and night and sometimes 24 hours. But you have supported us and that is why we have been able to perform the way we have performed. With those few remarks, I want to take this opportunity to invite the CS Interior, Professor Kedore Kidiki, to come and give his address. Welcome, sir. Your Grace, the Most Reverend Philip Agnolo, Metropolitan Archbishop of Nairobi, Your Excellency Rigadi Gachagua, Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, Secretary to the Cabinet, Masi Wanjao, Members of Parliament, Service Commanders, and all our members of the Uniformed Disciplined Forces, fellow Kenyans, mine this afternoon is very simple. I want to thank the church for the continued spiritual support and nourishment for men and women who have dedicated their lives to make sure that our country is safe and secure. I want to thank the leadership of the church and hope that they will continue supporting us as we discharge this patriotic duty of securing our homeland. Secondly, I take this opportunity to, to thank members of the Uniformed Disciplined Forces for the sacrifices they continue to make in protecting the rest of us, protecting the property of their fellow citizens, protecting the natural resources that God has given us, including our wildlife, our forests, and our environment. I want to thank each one of you for the sacrifices that you continue to make in helping us secure our nation. I want to assure you of the government's commitment to support you in your work. And as the minister responsible for the policy direction in the security sector, I want to assure you and your families that we will continue to improve the policy space upon which you work so that you feel appreciated and recognized because of the very important service you continue to provide to our nation. I do know that I'm coming in in the ministry when a number of reforms are ongoing on the improvement of the welfare of officers. And I want to assure you and your families that we'll continue building on those reforms to make sure that as you take care of us, we also take care of your welfare so that we can have a situation where our officers have morale and when they go home, 
they go home appreciated and that with the full knowledge that the country appreciates what they do for the rest of us. Therefore, today is a day just to give thanks to God for protecting us and keeping us safe. And in a special way, I want to appreciate the families of the members of the Uniformed Disciplined Forces who have to bear with your long hours of work and absence from home. And to every spouse, every child, every relative, and every neighbor of these men and women in uniform, I must say a special thank you for giving the social support to these colleagues to make sure that they do their duty. And many times you have to bear with the consequences of the nature of their work. Before I end my remarks, I also want to pass this message to the small minority among our people who continue to make our security difficult. And because I'm transitioning, I am learning to make short speech speeches. And therefore, I just want to communicate that we have a job to do to deal with the 1% among us who continue to make it difficult for the 99% in terms of our own safety, the safety of our property, and also the safety of every person who is lawfully resident in our republic. I want to assure you, we are committed to implement the directives that the president has continued to give in this sector, including the commitments and directives that His Excellency the President made yesterday in Trukana and in Samburu. And therefore, those who want to test how far we can go, please note that we will not rest until we make sure our mandate is fully fulfilled and this country becomes secure for all of us. And therefore, my urge is for all those who are engaged in wrongdoing to stop it as soon as now. With those many remarks, allow me now to welcome His Excellency, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, the Honorable Rigadi Kashagwa, to come and make his remarks on his behalf and on behalf of the President and the Commander-in-Chief of the Kenya Defense Forces. Welcome, Your Excellency.